Hi everyone, uh, this is Ignacio Tirabocchi. Today we'll, we'll be talking about generalization of metaprograms with dependent types in MTAC2 with MTAC2. Uh, this is a joint work with uh, Jan Oliver Kaiser and Beta Siliani. So let's begin. Cock is one of the most used proof assistants. So one of Cock's biggest strengths is that it's scalable. Uh, the automatization with meta languages through tactics. What this means is that we can create tactics, which will be our building blocks that allow us to create proofs that, um, yeah, and automatization uh, can be done in many ways. One can be, for example, to generate proofs um, through these tactics, which basically are algorithms that can modify proof states and so on. So there are several meta languages available. So specifically, we'll be focusing on MTAC2, as the title says. The biggest difference, LTAC, uh, sorry, MTAC2 has with LTAC, which is the default program language in Coq, is that MTAC2 has type tactics. Type tactics uh, have a signature and can only be used in the right context, uh, meaning that uh, if the tactic has to take some input A and then generate some type of input, uh, some uh, output B, uh, then we know for sure that we cannot do s put another thing in to the tactic. We cannot uh, feed anything else to the tactic. It won't work. Um, so, meanwhile, Altec has no kind of signature in the ta on your tactics. So, they work when they work, but we have no kind of way to ensure that they will work in every situation of a certain kind. I mean, we don't have any kind of signature on it. So, type tactics are easy to debug because of this. Um, when something does not fit, we get to know uh, immediately. So, yeah. And we can also use exceptions, for example, which are really useful for this kind of tactics. Um, there are several uh, programming languages features in MTAC2 that we'll not be discussing, but so just so you know. So when we we, we use Cox type checker to type check MTAC2 tactics, but because Cox is a pure language, we need to somehow encode the fact that we are actually performing secondary effects. So how, how can we do this? So the option that we chose in MTAC2 is to to use something that Haskell has been using for at least 30 years, which is monads. So monads uh, require that we use monadic operators. So in this case, uh, in MTAQ, we use bind and ret, which as we can see here, bind will connect the computations while ref, ret sorry, will be lifting values to the monad or putting values into the monad. So using bind, in red, we can manipulate and create computations. So we, we will not focus on the signature of bind and red for now, but just so that you know they, they have a <laughs> signature. And yeah, and we'll be using monadic pattern matching and monadic fixed point. So let's see the next example. Uh, in the following function, uh, we get a function that calculates the maximum element of a list of natural numbers. So this function list uh, max net pure will take a uh, simput a list of net and return a natural number. So the problem is that what do we do with the empty case? So we don't have anything to return. This is a usual problem with that kind of kind of function. So we can use emptech two and we can exploit syntax pattern matching as well as exceptions. So for the empty case, we can just uh, raise an exception, empty list, and then at some point on our program, we can catch it and do something with it. Uh, and maybe we want to pattern match on the L1 appended to L2, any kind of appended list. So maybe that's useful for us, who knows. So that's also something we can do in MTAC2, but not in COG. In pure cog. So the other option without using mtech2 would be to to ask for a proof that L is not empty. So how do we do this? We 
we um, we take as an input L, but then we return a function that says that the proof then the natural number. So basically what we're doing, we're delaying this proof by putting it as an implication. So when we go to the return type here, you can see that we're taking the proof here and then for each case we're just uh, doing a f an anonymous function and then taking the proof. So what we're doing is actually fairly complicated but uh, it allows us to to have a proof and then for the empty case we can just uh, do this and basically say cock this is unreachable this is false so we cannot actually get an empty list so that's cool but we're actually using something called the combo pattern by doing this return type so let's see what this is so the when we do this in this line of code, we are actually returning a function with a proof, but but that the proof depends on L. So this way, when the proof is actually introduced, uh, it's refined with the information of L, because the proof is different for each case of the match. So for each branch of the match, we get a different proof. So. The particular problem with the combo pattern in MTech 2 will be visible by inspecting mfix1, um, which is the fixed point we were using in the example. So here you can see that the return type of the mfix should look something like this for all x and px. The important thing is that um, we actually would like to use the combo pattern, but we can't if we're forced to put p inside the monad. So here p would be something like the proof um, implies net. That's the part that we're actually interested in. So the best we can do is that m fix one should be returned something like for all l m l is not empty net. So yeah, this is basically not what we actually want. This gives us access to reproof only once we return a proof value from within the monad, making it unuseful for us. So, what we can actually do is that we can actually use mfix and mtm match. These are the generalized versions of mfix1 and nmatch, the ones we were using in our example. So, the thing is that these two versions have a more general type that will actually allow us to do this. So we can do this, but uh, I mean, this works for this case because we just need mfix and mtn match. But what if we are using any other monadic operator? We we cannot do this. We we don't have generalized versions of those ones. So yeah, that's not actually good. So we want to create a new version that it's more general. So. Um, this way, we'll see the, the actual problem itself. So, we, we start by defining max, which is the function that returns the maximum relation for elements of a certain type. So, what we mean by this is that we can define this function max for um, the sets that we're, we're interested in, for example, nat and bool, but maybe we raise an exception for the, the sets that we're not, not actually expecting. So, this way, um, we can use our function max in our original function, the one uh, we just coded in mtag2. So, this is the attempt we have. So, this is not going to work. We're trying to find, so this is notation for bind, and we're trying to bind max s with the mfix, the new mfix, with this type. So this is wrong. Why is it wrong? So if we look at bind signature, we see that bind is actually returning something of type MB. Meanwhile, uh, yeah, this is max signature, but the important thing is that actually for all has this signature. So we're trying to fit this in MB. 
and we definitely can because this has an M here, but um, MB basically starts with an M. We we definitely cannot uh, combine these two stuff, these two things. Sorry. So if we could create a new bind. This would work for this situation. So basically, just define a new function called bind uh, x, and yeah, and define it and just program it and yeah, it would definitely work. It wouldn't be that hard either, but the problem is that, I mean, it will only work in this case. So if we modify anything about our function, our bind wouldn't work. So we would need another new bind. So basically what I'm saying is that for each specific case, we should bind, uh, sorry, code a new bind, or maybe we're not even talking about bind. Maybe we're talking about any other operator, or maybe the developer even implemented a new one. So basically, this is not scalable. So we can't, we don't want to code a specific function each time we want to use it. So we chose to approach a much more general alternative, which is the almost automatic generalization of meta functions. So using telescopes, which is an MTAC2 data structure we'll introduce uh, in a minute, we can indicate the dependencies of interest and generalize the best variety of functions. So this generalization, we'll call it lift, and it's basically a recursion over the signature of the function, analyzing, yeah, analyzing the signature, yeah. So with lift, uh, we can generate the new bind that we actually want, and it has the following signature. So um, we go into detail, detail, detail sorry, uh, on the signature in a minute, but I just want you to notice that the signature now it returns a function. So it, it doesn't have the M at the beginning. Now it's inside this for all, where we, ha we can put the list and the proof. And then we have a, a type that depends on the list and the proof. So that is basically what we are looking for. And we'll try to build up to that signature in a minute. So this is the signature of list. Uh, lift, sorry. Um, it's basically taking something we don't know, which is a tie tree, something called two tie, which we don't know either, and an M tally, which we also don't know. So we need to introduce this so you can get an idea on how this is actually working. And so, yeah, M tally and tie tree are two new data structures, but actually, tie tree is new. M tally is just already implemented in MTAC2. And we also have this function to tie, which will transform a tie tree into a type, a cock type. So telescopes will actually allow us to express a sequence of types of values, possibly dependent and arbitrarily long. So let's not focus on the signature. We'll actually focus on the, on the, sorry, the notation for the telescopes, because that is going to be much more useful. So so M is actually uh, is building the empty telescope, which has no kind of, uh, no dependencies at all. But we can build something like this. Um, so here we'll be building a telescope with two elements. So first we have the list L, it's a list of uh, S, and then we have P, which is a proof that L is not empty. So what we're doing here is that we're encoding two values, L and P. And P is depending on L, just like the mfix we were using. So this will actually be the telescope we use in the example. And um, yes, so also we have to, to remember that S is going to already be defined in the context. So that's why I'm not defining S before, but definitely we could uh, create different telescopes because we defining as sorry because we can also define types in the telescope like for example here we can define as a set then elements of the set and then a new type depending on on s and so on yeah okay so type trees are a reflection of cox type so basically what this means is that um we can describe signatures as a tie tree. So with the function to tie, which 
transform type tree to type. Uh, this is super important. It's actually allowing us to replace the signature of a function with a type tree in cog. So by using type to tie, we can say cog. Okay, bind has this signature, which is a type, but also it can be written as a type tree. Um, and this will be really useful to uh, the analysis we do to the types. So what this means also, I mean, this is also equivalent to saying that for each function f with a signature t, we have t prime, which is a tie tree, such that uh, t is actually equal to the two tie of t prime. So for each type, we can write a new tie tree, which is actually equivalent thanks to two tie. So um, yeah, so what we have so far is that lift is a function that has uh, three arguments inside. So it takes a function f, which is the one what we want to generalize. It takes a tie tree, which is the one that uh, we want to, uh, sorry, the one that describes the signature of f. So the equivalent of the type of f. And we have a telescope with dependencies. So we're looking to add the dependencies of m onto f. Um, as we saw before, the fixed point in list math has the following signature. So this is the signature, right? We have then we take the list, the proof, and then we return an element uh, ms. So then that's the telescope that we need, right? This is the one that we saw before. We have the list and we have the proof. So just before we left, I just wanted you to remind you that this is bind. And we're going to need at some point to define the tie tree of bind to put it as an input to the function. But this can be done automatically. So you shouldn't worry too much about the actual um, elaboration of tie trees. Uh, but you can see that this is actually one to one. So for example, um, bind begins uh, defining two new types, A and B. So introducing, sorry, two new types, A and B. So here we do the same. We just say, okay, this is a for all, introducing a type, for all, introducing a type, A and B are types. And then we have an implication uh, and so on. Okay, we're really very ready to lift bind. Uh, to execute lift, um, we have to issue the following command. So. Here we have bind, which is the function we'll lift. We have at saying that we're taking um, bind with all the implicit arguments, but this is uh, a technicality of lift. Uh, with the dagger, we're going to, to call lift. So this is basically notation. Um, we'll be using this telescope here. So now, but that we can actually lift and we can expect the resulting function and signature. So so we start by comparing what the signature of bind looks like. Uh, and we can compare it with this one, the original one. So what I want you to notice is that basically we have something quite similar to the original one. So here, um, on the original one, we had A and B, which are types. Now we have A and B, which they're dependent types. So we take L and P, and then we have a type. Before, we had M, A. Now we have an for all L and P, M, A, or P. So we're basically adding the dependencies everywhere. <laughs> so this function as well, we take L and P, and then we have the function. And basically, we end saying, for all LP, M, B, L, P. So, and exactly, this is exactly what we wanted for the fixed point. So this is really cool. Um, finally, we can now define list max using our new bind. So, um, so the important thing is here, exactly here. So this is new bind we already defined. We we'll also need to lift max S because as you saw before, everything is has been generalized. I mean, every part of the function has been generalized. So we will be lifting max as, as well. 
and and this would be the telescope we just used we're just using it again um yeah and this is the fixed point the fixed point we we know and love so as you can see this is the signature and now everything should fit so yeah and we're also assuming that a and v are implicit arguments to the of bind that we're not actually using um so we want to for the future for the future we want to add left as a standard feature in nemtag 2 but still something that's still in development so we're not there yet so what we actually need to to add it to mtag 2 what we actually want would be the automatic inference of telescopes what we mean by this is that we wish to sorry we wish to um to to automatically create the telescopes without us creating the telescopes because right now what we're doing is that we're coding the telescopes ourselves basically we're looking at signatures and creating a new one but uh in the same way we're actually looking at signatures we can ask cog to do it for us so when so when we actually want to lift we can ask cog to observe the signatures of the of this of the functions we want to bind and then um, definitely cog can analyze it and say okay this is the dependencies that we need based on the signature of bind and based on the signature of the mfix for example and then create a new bind uh, automatically and with the good notation i mean because for example here this is the example from the motivation using uh, some uh, notation for bind basically saying okay we want to bind max s with this mfix so do it for us so basically create a telescope and bind and we can we also trying to come up with notation for um any kind of bind situation uh, sorry any kind of lifting situation we want to to come up with but specifically uh this is one is for bind and we have a very good idea for how it would work and bind yeah and as a conclusion uh so lift is fast and what i mean by this is that um is that compiling the solution is really fast but also the resulting function is really fast so let me go back a minute so we can see this which i basically skipped i'm sorry is that the resulting function is really simple so it's basically bind with all the arguments in the right place and yeah that's basically what we would write if we had to do it ourselves so that's really cool and the domain is pretty big so most mtech 2 constructors can be lifted the exception would be mfix1 and mmatch uh they're basically too complex they have uh, complicated dependencies that we cannot uh, deal with but basically any other constructor it's okay and this is fully implemented in mtech2 so we're using mtech2 as its own meta language to write mtech2 per meta per, sorry meta programs yeah <laughs> uh yeah and that's that's all thank you for your time